What's up guys? So not my first ride on the uh, new uh, Ducati, but uh, the first one I filmed on, I was able to finally locate my GoPro in storage for this guy. Um, had to run a couple errands today, so I figured I'd finally do my first film here on this. So just so you know, this bike is an absolute effing animal. Um, I still have all the nanny gear stuff on. It's in sport mode, so it's pretty brutal, but race mode's even worse. Um, but I've got everything pretty much low as it'll go, nanny-wise, in, in sport mode. I still can't get it to wheelie. I mean, I could, <clears throat> I can be going 90 miles an hour on on the highway and hit it, and it'll pick up two inches off the ground. Uh, is that a cop? Probably. Um, it'll pick up two inches off the ground. What is that in the road? I don't want to be hit with that. Ooh, sod. Nice. So it'll, it'll pick me up off the ground and throw me down immediately. So I still, uh, listen, I, I'm just riding the thing, really. I've learned how to turn everything down, but not off, uh, because I would like to do some wheelies on this thing. I probably just wait until I get the first oil change anyways, until I really start screwing with it. I'm just enjoying riding it as it's an absolute monster. It's so awesome, this bike. So, anyways, I'm about to jump on the highway. I don't know how well you can hear it, but it's got a nice, you know, rumble to it for, for stock. Obviously, it's not near as loud as the MT-10, but this makes up for it and all the right places, man. This thing is an absolute monster. Golly! So I put the uh, EvoTech radiator guards on. I I 3M wrapped the aluminum shrouds that were silver around the uh, radiator guard. So those are matte black. I think it looks pretty good and then of course I've got the tire letters on there the uh, the quick shift on this thing is incredible I've got to tell you the downshift up or uh, quick shift up and down the blipper good lord amazing absolutely amazing buttery smooth this bike is just nasty so, you're probably not going to be able to hear me much on I-75 here, so, oh, what is going on? And I got a little bit of a stint on the highway, so I'll pick up with you after a bit. Here we go. until I get these nanny stuff off. Which I'm definitely looking forward to. I think I'm at 300 miles. Where is my miles? Trip. 275 miles. So once I get to 300 miles, or uh, I'm sorry, 610, no, 621 miles, I gotta go do the first service kind of annoying. I never go back to the dealership ever for anything for service, but 
I don't know. Sometimes I hear they bust balls about warranty, so I'm just gonna go do it. It's 299 bucks, and then the the next oil change is at 7,500 miles. So I don't know. Uh, I think uh, I think the first time's gonna be that'll be fine. Let them do the once over. So. All right, guys, I'm, in, I'm gonna uh, turn this camera off for right now because it's hard to hear or talk when the wind's going 80 miles an hour. Oh, and by the way, it's uh, I'm doing 75. It feels exactly the same as the MT-10 on the highway. It's not bad. Um, I'm sure, you know, it's been a while since I've been on any of my R1s, but I'm sure it would be just a little bit better on the R1 for a full fairing bike because of wind protection, but I mean, it's it's not out of control. It's not whipping my head around or anything like that, so I think if you keep it under 80, 75 or 80, it's fine. It's 77. Yeah, I mean, 80 is fine. It's not bad. I mean, it'll get tiring after six hours of riding, I'm sure, but it's it's not something you can't deal with for a bike like this, I feel like. So, all right, guys, I will I'll get back with you soon here and uh, just play, maybe do a little bit of a walk around and show you where it's at as of right now. See you. Hey, what's up guys? Just continuing my video in front of the Dunkin' Donuts here like a weirdo. But uh, just had to stop at my local Ducati dealer when I put these radiator guards on. Um, this weekend, <clears throat> I noticed that the radiator fluid was kind of low, pretty low. And of course, being that the exotic Ducati, you can't just buy uh, radiator fluid right off the shelf. You got to order it from... I don't know what the hell it was from. It's going to be a week before it gets here. So I decided, and it was $40. Um, so I decided to just stop in and see if they could top me off, and they did, which is really cool. Uh, I'm getting rid of these RNGs. You can see I keep cutting them because they keep coming up. The more I cut, the worse it seems to get, even though I'm getting the less gooey part off here. It's just, don't buy these. They suck. <clears throat> I do have new ones coming. But uh, anyways, there it is. Tire letters, uh, radiator guards, uh, radiator shrouds have been uh, 3M wrapped, so I think that looks much better. So just wanted to give a quick walk around and um, see, uh, let's just, you know, see what it's looking like right now. Um, I don't know that I'm going to do a ton more to it. I don't know if I need the exhaust, honestly. It's just, God, it's just so damn fast as is. And really, you're just paying for it to be loud because, my God, it doesn't need any more power. But um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Nice big fat effing screw that I got in my tire in the first 200 miles, so I had to plug it. There that is. Lovely. <laughs> so, uh, anyways. Just stopped at the local Ducati dealer. I didn't buy the bike from here, but their service is actually pretty awesome. They've always helped me out and been good to me. You know, when I go get service, he just topped me off for free, which was cool. I didn't buy it there. They didn't have to do that. Um, I wish I just would have tried this first instead of ordering $40 worth of uh, rad fluid. Uh, you know, I've got MT-10, MT-09, R1. You know, I always have to top them off after the first, I don't know, 300 600 miles i'll top the radiator reservoir off because it always loses a little bit when it's new i don't think i've had a bike that hasn't um but of course with this everything you do and buy with it is different or not super available to your typical shop and of course they didn't have any here they just happen to have some in the back of course when they do service and there's a nice picks for the gram so anyways let's jump back on <clears throat> Uh, one complaint, my only, my only one complaint about this bike so far, it absolutely devours 
gas devours it. It is a gas guzzling pig. I thought the MT-10 was bad. This is even worse. <laughs> well, I don't know that it's worse. The, 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 the light comes on, I feel like super early. I know I just saw a gas station around here. The light comes on super early and it's got a four gallon tank but I'm only about only able to to put about two gallons in. Oh, look at this guy! Maybe he wants to do a little riggedy race. Oh, the new Corvette is sexy looking. See, I'm only able to put two and a half gallons in. And so, what's this, what's this? Ooh, ZX-14. No. So two and a half gallons, and it's a four gallon tank, so that's the problem. It's the, the warning light comes on way too early, <clears throat> which gives me anxiety. Where's my trip meter? Trip one, comes, it came on at 70 miles. Reset, yes, okay. So, oops. That's annoying to me. I mean, there's obviously plenty of gas. Plenty of gas, but it's coming on at 70 miles. I just put two and a half gallons in with a four gallon tank. So that's a oh, bummer. That's that's coming on way, way, way too early, which gives me uh, anxiety because I see it lights on. I'm like, oh my God, I got a gas. Well, obviously you can go a lot farther than what it's saying because I only could put two and a half gallons in a four point something gallon tank. So, uh, you know, that's, that, that. That annoys me. I mean, I guess it is what it is, but. Oh, I can't tear in. Oh, frick. I guess I gotta do a Yui. <clears throat> so I'm constantly on the hunt for gas when I really don't need it. I get it, you know, making you not want to run out of gas. That's cool. But, uh, you know, I'm not really trying to um, be filling up so damn early either, which sucks. Literally, that's my only complaint about the bike, is it eats gas, and, and maybe it really doesn't because it's just coming on way too early for me. Ooh, it's hot out, hot as hell today. This freaking guy, come on, bro. Get your ass going. So, other than the gas issue, it's which is. Maybe, uh, you know, a Ducati computer uh, flaw, whatever, or maybe they're purposely doing it. But it just annoys me because how many times are you gonna, I mean, at 70 miles, that, that's like, no, I, I don't know. I'd have to do the calculation. I'm not that smart on the calculator, but I can't do it in my head. So, it just, and then, and then, let's see, what's my constant average? 58.7. Consumption average, I mean. Constant average, <laughs> whatever. Um, what the hell is my other one? Yeah, I, 50 point, 49, I mean, I don't know. Something doesn't match right on this thing. 
So I don't know what to do. Nothing. Just keep filling up at freaking 70 miles, I guess. <clears throat> so we'll see. But other than that, the bike's fantastic, man. I love this bike. It's definitely um so I want to compare the, the best I could compare to is the R1. That's one of the most, you know, I've had three R1s. That's probably one of the most powerful bikes I've owned. Um, or technically three of the most powerful bikes I've owned. It's a powerful bike. And I know how to turn all the nannies off on that one. I'm still, you know, I just haven't, I have not taken the time to learn this bike. I've just been, you know, I got Ducati uh, traction control, wheelie control, all that on one, but it's not letting me do any wheelies at all. So I just gotta, I just gotta learn to get into the, to the, you know, into the menu options and figure out how to turn it all off. I don't want it all off. I just want the wheelie control off. So, once I learn that, I'll be pretty stoked. And obviously, it's... I don't put it in race mode all that often. <clears throat> uh, because I actually like the way it sounds better in sport mode. Well, that sounds weird. Let's see, what the hell road am I on here? Do I want to take a right? Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, it, it's effing fast. It is effing fast. Is this the road I want to take? No. Is that it? Plantation? Shit, it is. Let's see if I can blast a Yui. You'd almost think that I'd never lived here before, not not for 40 years. But here I am, making a U-turn on a road that I go down all the time. Oh, frick! What the frick? How did I not see that a mile away either? Oh, I'm, fuck this, I'm going through here. Oh, there's a cop right there. complex which is also the COVID center COVID testing center so that's why everything's weird over there You guys could watch this on any old video everybody talks about it. it's it's a comfortable bike it is a little bit more sporty of a position than let's say the mt10 uh, i will say that the seat is way more comfortable than the mt10 i could ride this i feel like i could ride this for hours and not get my ass hurt um that's one thing on the 09s and 10s my mt 09s and MT-10s that I just, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't ride them forever. A half an hour and my ass was hurt. This is actually a really comfortable seat, even though the position's just a tad more sporty. Sport bike-ish. Over, um, let's say your typical naked bike, the 09s and 10s are pretty, pretty upright. <clears throat> and maybe that's part of it, because you're, uh, getting a little bit of weight little bit more weight on your um, on your you know upper body or your arms <clears throat> over just your butt <clears throat> so maybe that's part of it I don't know but the seat is definitely comfortable pretty squishy it's thick it's nice it's a nice seat 
It ought to be for what the bike costs. So, 